And then you let me know. You know about all this stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. We're gonna open up to Philippians chapter one. Just go around. Just go around. Go around. All right. I see you guys just pointing to each other, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. So Philippians one is what where we are reading. Okay, where is my own Philippians 1? Today, uh, well, this week, you guys, I've been reading, uh, well, usually every week I'm supposed to be, I'm trying to read every day something. Uh, I've been on and off, but I've been more consistent than past. And then um, uh, I decided, because I have a Bible study with Matthew every every week, right? But he he's unfortunately lagging, so uh, he had uh, we got confused on the timing and stuff. So I'm like, you know what? Rather than trying to catch up or figure out where we're at, because we're trying to read a chapter a day out of the same book, yeah, I decided, man, I just gotta read, pick out the book, and read it for me, you know, out of the Bible, and say, you know, let me just roll with it and go through it, like really, you know. And I, I decided to just Philippians. God, I don't know why, but God wanted me to read Philippians. So I started reading Philippians, and you know, like I told you guys, when you want to, when you read the Bible, you don't just read it and don't, you know, read it trying to speed through it so you feel like you read a lot, but you don't also want to go, you know, uh, read just a little bit, and that's it. You want to really just go through it and stop where you where you feel like you want to study it a little more, you know, even if it's like, you know, a paragraph and it took you two hours to read because you really digested it. God rather you want, he rather wants you to like really study that passage rather than go through a whole book in the Bible and not really understand what it was about, you know, because this is supposed to be spiritual food for us, okay? Just like your body, remember, what are those two things, I've been going through it the last few weeks, what are the two things that we deal with? We have a flesh, flesh, and like a fleshly body, and we have a spiritual body, okay? We have, uh, our spirit is, well, every day, what do we do? We feed our flesh body we feed it every day food you know all that stuff along with a whole bunch of other junk in this world you know how we treat our body and two our spiritual body how do we feed our spiritual body our spirit how do we feed our spirit by reading the bible by praying by coming to church and worshiping and when when we have you know alabanza, all that kind of stuff but what we end up doing we always feed the, the the flesh the flesh the flesh all the time we never concentrate on the spirit you guys might think so but the huge part, the actual food of the spirit is the word of God. It's the Bible, plain and simple. Everything else is set. It's just like food is absolutely necessary for our physical body. And everything else is secondary, like our clothes, what we, you know, do, how we act, what we say. But the food is the main thing, and that's the Bible for our spirit. So I was reading Philippians, and it was really soon. I want you guys to uh, go all the way down to verse 12. Um, what's the first two words? Now I, now I, right? And look at this. Right away, I didn't even get through half of the chapter, and I got stuck. Uh, this this verse took like took me two hours to go through. You know, like an hour, two hours, because it was just it. There was so much in just the two verses I read. It was crazy. I'm gonna read it. Okay, um, verse twelve. Okay. Now, I, first, the heading, what is the heading? Paul's, change. Paul's change, chains advance the gospel, okay? It says, now I want you to know, this is Paul talking, now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Okay? Now, first things first. What's happening here? Paul, okay? Paul, an impossible God, okay? Uh, he, he's going out and he's preaching the gospel one day and then he gets thrown in prison for it, right? Now, he's in prison. He's chained up. What if you guys had a friend, right, that you love deeply, just threw into jail and in chains? How would you feel? 
you laugh at them first, and then you try to help. And then you try to help. Yeah. How would you feel first? Yes. Feel like feelings, emotions. How would you feel? Scared. Scared, right? You would feel scared. What else? Stephanie, how would you feel if I was thrown into jail? Genesis. 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 <gasps> Stephanie, how would you feel if I was thrown into jail? Just chained up. Well, there had to be a reason for it. Okay, just how would you feel? Well, it depends if you did a bad thing. Okay, no, okay, no. Oh, never mind. Okay, scared. Scared, okay? Scared, right? Worried, right? Somebody said worried. I'll be very okay. worried. I want to know what you did. Who said worried? Okay, all right, good. Now, look, let's move on. Look, look. Now, if you read it, though, okay, he's in chains. Why? For preaching the gospel, right? Now, in the verse, though, what, what, what makes no sense? You guys said that you guys would worry, you guys would be scared, you guys feel negative. Overall, you would feel negative, right? You wouldn't feel positive. You wouldn't be like, yes. You know that? Let's say I went to jail because I spread the, the gospel. I was saying, hey, you guys, Jesus loves you. Hey, you're going to jail. I'm, I'm chained up, you know, and I'm not in a good jail. I'm in a, you know, a really bad place just because I was, I, let's say I was preaching too much or whatever. They put me to jail because they say, hey, you're supposed to not preach in the public or whatever you guys would feel scared sad oh my gosh you know maybe some of you guys would feel angry you know Be like man you know you got, but nothing nothing positive though right you wouldn't feel like yes memos finally that guy could be quiet no 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 okay now look listen what what is the reaction of the people that uh when they find out paul is he says the brothers and sisters meaning you know, let's say I was Paul. You're my brothers and sisters, you know, because we're all one in Christ. Well, now, what does it say? It says, okay, verse 13. First, he's explaining how uh, everybody finds out, right? It says, as is a result, it has become clear through the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ, meaning I'm in prison because of, of spreading the gospel. 14. And because of my chains, because of me being chained down, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Say, have become confident. Does that make sense? How is this? It, it's making them confident in the Lord of being a Christian, you know, because their main Christian go-to guy. Well, it's like you guys, obviously, but me put it to, to put in perspective, me. Let's say I went to jail because of God, because I talk about God. And then I go to jail, and then you guys, all of a sudden, you guys feel confident. Oh, man, I was in jail. Oh, yes, man. I feel so confident in God. I'm, I want to go. And even says they dared to go spread the word, you know? And it's just most of all the brothers and sisters felt that way. How does that make sense? That's today in society as well. Oh, how, how, where is this confidence coming from? What do you guys think? It doesn't, it doesn't sound... Like, right, right? Look, I'm going to explain to you. I put, it says, I put it as point one, the fact that one of God's leaders of the faith is suffering and captured brings about somewhat of, I think, a defensive attitude out of the others who normally do not openly proclaim the word of God. Okay? And I put, if I, Memo, were captured and chained for spreading the word, and the youth found out, would any of them step up and push the word forward for God? Now think of it like that. These people, it's like, let's say, who is a brother or sister? Who doesn't? No, oh, okay, everybody knows. Okay, good, look. Let's say, oh man, Brian, don't answer this, okay? <laughs> look, let's say somebody was picking on your brother or sister. Okay. Everybody has, uh, well, for the most part, a younger brother or sister or same age. <laughs> okay. Uh, but let's say they're picking on them. Or you have a little family member, a little cousin, somebody little, and they're picking on them, right? How does that make you feel? You go up to them or go up to the person bullying them and say, hey, what's your problem? What's your problem? You, you better stop. I'm bigger than you or something like that. You know, I had this story at one time. I was in McDonald's and, and it was when I was small enough to go in the play place. Okay, wow, and then somebody was picking on Lena, 
This is where me and my sister got along a lot when we played in the play place together. Okay? Listen, these these little kids were picking on her. And then I heard and Nina came and told me. And they were in the ball pit. You know, the ball pit was like a circular floor. I know, man. And then and then there was like there was like a tube to get in there. And I said, Okay, go in there, Nina. Go in there. I made it all dramatic. Okay. I said, Look, go in there. And he said, Well, tell him this. Well, I have a big brother. And then I and then I went, I'm like, Okay, that's my cue. I go in. I I go into the little plastic things. Are you cool? And I'm like, Yeah. You messing with my sister? Yeah, yeah. What grade are you in? Well, I'm in first grade. <laughs> <laughs> they were like in kindergarten. No, but look, look, see? But it gave me, listen, it gave me like a defensive attitude, right? It gave me like this this attitude like, hey, somebody's messing with with somebody I love. You know, so I go out there and, and what? I feel confident, right? Because I'm like, man, somebody's picking on her, man. I'm going to go, I'm going to stand up for her. It, regardless if she was littler than me or older than me. You know, one time, you know, my dad, he doesn't know English as well as we do, you know, but, you know, I, I, you know, people were playing around with how we spoke and I spoke up and my dad's older than me because my dad's not, you know, there to defend us. He doesn't know what they were saying. Right. How many of you guys have parents like that, that, that don't know English as their first language. And then you kind of stand up. Hey, 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 no, this is how it goes. You know, you stand up for them. Right. It gives you confidence to go. It has a defensive attitude. Like kind of thing. The same thing we got. These people were probably confident in spreading the word of God because they saw one of their leaders or their brother or sister of the faith chained up just because they were spreading the word of God. So, hey, you're messing with them. You know what? All the power to us. I'm going to have confidence and I'm going to, and not only that, but what does it say that? It, it had, they had confidence and what else? It said, my point too, is this. He not only says confident, but also daring all the more to spread the word without fear. Look, what does daring mean? Yeah. Daring. Yeah. Okay. Look, daring is a much deeper sense of attitude, okay, of how they went to spread the word, okay? Because these people were confident to go spread the word. You can be confident. All right, let's go. We're going to go spread the word, right? But daring and being confident is more like, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. When you dare to go do something, what do you think of like? I think of like skydiving, right? Like uh, yeah, it's something kind of risky. Some, so, like you know the risk. Exactly what Sarita said. You know the risk, right? You know there's danger. Okay. You know there's gonna be hardship. There's gonna be struggle. There's gonna be. It's 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 a battlefield. Okay. Cool. You know, but you're gonna do it anyway. So you're that confident that you're able to dare yourself, knowing. Who you're gonna be up against? What could happen to you? Now these people, it's nothing like today. These people, they could have suffered. You know, the only reason why Paul didn't die or was like tortured right away and stuff like that for most of these places because he was a Roman citizen. But these other people, the followers uh, that that weren't like Paul, they were just, they you know, they weren't Roman citizens. If they were to spread the word, not being Roman citizens back then. Right away, they could be, okay, let's chop your head off. Oh, let's do this. If you don't stop that, we're going to torture you. We're going to throw you in the prison. You get, you know, a whole mess of pain, you know? So they, knowing that could happen, did it anyway. They're like, we're going to dare. We're going to go do it. We're going to go spread the word. We, we have confidence. We're daring to do this, knowing well what could happen to us. That attitude, you know? It's like something completely, like, opposite of what you would expect somebody to do feel and do after they hear one of the main and it is fine it's fine it's perfectly we know how we would feel right away if let's say pastor you know somebody we we revere very highly in god you know spiritually and stuff now all of a sudden oh he's god because of oh my gosh what do we do oh my god and you get scared you get worried you're like what do we do now you know but it's saying here the food is it's saying you should have that attitude where like no you know what that should give you confidence that should give you daring. That should get you wanting to, hey, he's not there. We got to pick up the slap. We got to go. We got to spread the word. We got to pick up where he left off. Okay? And that's that's a big attitude that's missing within the youth, within the church. A lot of people don't pick it up. They just like following, you know, someone that's preaching God, you know, when it's supposed to be each and every one of us. A lot, a, a, the church of God, us, followers of Jesus, isn't supposed to be 
a whole bunch of churches everywhere, and there's one main leader, a few little leader, little leaders, and we just come to church, listen to them all the time. No, God cost, called us to disciple, meaning each and every one of us could become that person on the street in people's houses in another country. We need to go and this. That's what being a disciple is. It's not just sitting down and listening to me, listening to anybody else, listening. To, no, we're teaching you. He's teaching you. Everybody's teaching. We're supposed to be teaching that you guys are supposed to be growing in yourself spiritually and go out and have your own Bible study. Go out and find somebody that doesn't know God and you preach to them. You're going to have that platform to, to be a light for those people. Okay? Now, um, what I, I put, uh, why is it? Okay, look, watch this. What does it say here? Um, let me see. He uses the word in verse, let me see what verse. Uh, all right, verse 14. What are the first two words? And because, and because you got it right? Wait. Verse 14. Nah, you gave me the wrong page. Oh, uh, do everything? Oh, okay. 14, you got it? What are the first three words? And because. Okay, read the whole verse. I'll tell you when to stop. And because of my chains, most of my brothers and sisters. Stop. Have... What did it say? And because of my chains, what? Most. Most of the brothers and sisters have become confident. And that's key. What does most mean? No. Not all. Not all the brothers and sisters fell that way. Even though somebody was locked up because of spreading the word, and most of them, because of that, they kind of, like I like to say, I work a lot sometimes when I'm, you know, put your pilas on, you know. Some of the people there that because of what happened to Paul, their pilas, they turned on and said, you know what? We got to do something. We got to go spread the word. But not all of them. Why do you think? What are the reasons why? Not all of them felt that way. How come not all of their bilas turned on? Think of it today. How come not all of our youth here, people in the congregation, go and spread the word? Actually go and do it. Okay. What, as, as a youth, what makes it so that you guys choose not to tell somebody at work or tell somebody at school or tell somebody just out in public? What? causes you not to do that. Hmm? Weak will. Weak will? Weak will. Oh, weak will. Okay. Scared. Scared. Okay. I think one, a big one, what would cause, let's say, Caleb. Let's use Caleb because he's the youngest one here. Okay? He goes to middle school still, right? Okay, look. He goes to junior high. What would make, honestly, honestly, let's, let's pick Caleb. Why would Caleb not maybe tell somebody that doesn't know God you know, same age as him about God. How would I know? I know. He's no. There we go. What? Because he's, he's embarrassed, right? I know you. You would. Yeah, because obviously, you know, like that. You're like Jesus. Anybody? You know? <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, this. I know you. I know. I know you, you would. But let's say it's because he's embarrassed. Why? Because they want to be cool, right? You want, to be cool. you want to fit in. Why? You want to fit in because not every. If, if you need to fit in. And that's why you don't want to talk about God is because all of them don't know God, you know, and maybe that's not where you should fit in. You get it? Now, look, embarrassment is one. The embarrassment, listen, Stephanie, stop talking. Uh, embarrassment is a really easy one. But second, why would somebody not want to spread the word? Rejection, yeah. I want, I'm thinking of a, of a, a good one right here. Okay, keep saying different things. Why, why wouldn't you? Think of yourself. Why wouldn't you spread the word? Or why don't you? As much as you lack of knowledge. Stephanie? Yeah, because like, if I were to go out to a group of people and like start trying to spread the word, I think I wouldn't know enough and they would say something. Okay, okay, hold that, hold that. That's another point, okay? Um, I think like what holds back a lot of people is that they never really like fully understand the way that okay 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 no i don't i don't want okay okay. you guys have the same one i'm just gonna say okay because that's my third point um guilt 
guilt is a huge reason why people don't Christians, people that supposedly know God and have a relationship with God, the hugest reason why they don't spread the word is because they feel guilty for how they are living right now. Because they know behind closed doors, be outside of this church, they're actually not living that way. They're not living like God calls us to live. You know? Because look, look, listen. They I put knowing how you behave around people you know on a daily basis is not that of a true follower of Christ. So let's say if I were to work, right, and I act a certain way, and that's no way near how, you know, uh, I know I'm supposed to act. And then all of a sudden, let's just take, say I start saying, hey, um, to my coworker, hey, do you, know, do you want to know about God? You know what? And, and, and I will feel embarrassed because I'm going to start talking about God to him. I'm gonna say, you know, this is what you need. To, what we, well, how we should act, how God wants us to act. You gotta accept Him. You gotta bear good fruits. You know, you gotta do this and this. And then you start saying stuff, and you know, they say, "Man, why do you do that all the time?" It's just like exactly like I tell you. That's why it's so important. If you guys curse, you need to stop cursing because how are you gonna go to tell? It's like saying, "Have you ever guys um, had that drug week at school when you're in elementary school?" Oh. Say no to drugs. But, you know, and then you have to go home with the papers and have your parents go out that uh, don't smoke or something like that. And then um, your parents smokes. You know, it's just like, oh. Ma, how, how you, that, you don't want me to smoke, but you're smoking? That makes no sense, right? How are you going to go up to somebody and tell them about God and how God would like us to follow him and the ways we should act when we're not acting that way? So it's not, it. it and that's a huge like turn off to people that want to spread the word because they know they're not following what God's saying. That's huge. That's sad. I don't. I don't want that to be me. I don't want that to be you guys. Like, if you feel really guilty, that's why you don't want to tell people. And I'm not talking about strangers. I'm talking about people you know already in your lives that you see almost every day or once a week or whatever. You know they don't know God, but you don't want to tell them about God because that'll put you on the spot. Because they're like, well, well, you don't do all that stuff. You know, and and that's before you even say it, anything to them, you already thought of that in your mind. That that pierces your heart. You know, the word of God is like a double-edged sword. It's in the Bible. It says the word of God, the Bible, is like a sword that has a sharp edge on both sides. It's supposed to go. It goes right through your heart because even you know you failed in so many ways against what God wants us to live. Yeah, go ahead. Um, what about we don't know how to even. Wait, wait, that's my next one. That's my next one. Okay. All right. We're yeah, everybody got it. Guilt. Guilty. Right? Guilt. Okay. Third one. Not knowing the... Okay, look. This one is huge. Okay? This one kind of goes with what Jackie was about to say. Instead of first... No, yeah. I didn't mean to say that. I meant to say, like... How to start a conversation about it and keep it going or something like that. No, because I'm very quiet at work. I don't really go or talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. So... I don't understand, like, how could I maybe bring it up until we be like, okay, we're ending. Even though Jesus loves you. <laughs> <laughs> you, find, you find a way? Hey, why? Well, I mean, there's, 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 there's the only thing that can touch me. I don't know how to explain But I don't know how to maybe approach it to the young ones. Like, don't be just because they don't ask me questions. And now I'm talking either. Well, that's a, that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, don't need. You have to find a way. That's when you have to put your feet up on Okay, you got to find a way, find a way, whether it's, you know, just, hey, hey, you guys want to go out one day? Hey, you want to, hey, we're, our church is having a, 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 an event, we have service Fridays, you come, find a way to, to get them the book, you know? That's why our youth group is set up, you know, um, we're supposed to be making events and stuff, so that it brings, those, it's supposed to be used as a hook to get those people in the door, and then from there, Give them, you know, but the thing is, the the a lot of ministries that involve youth, they focus a lot on that, and they never actually stay for the word of God. You know, mm -hmm. it's just event, event. They come for only that. It's been for years, and that's like a, that's really bad in the house of God. It's it's sad, but we got to figure out a way to maneuver around that. That's why we try to always say, hey, you want to come to uh to Six Flags? I say, okay, you got to come to service at least this many times or this whatever, so that it's. It's almost like a deal, but it's the best deal they're going to get because they're going to hear the word of God, you know? And and the people that are always like, ah, no, nah, but, oh, sorry. 
it, we're about God first, everything else second. Sorry, that's just how it is. And then people get all mad and all hurt. Like, it was, you know what? Do you see that big cross outside? I mean, that's what we're up. You go, go. If you really want to go, you want to go yourself, go. Why? You want, oh, because you want to come with us. Oh, well, we're about God. So you gotta get, put your pilas on, you know? <laughs> no, but um, you got to find a way. You, know, you just got to find a way. Look, uh, another, another, uh, another way, another reason, my final point of why people don't spread the word of God is because you don't know the word of God yourself. You know, oh, David, Goliath, oh, Jonah. The Ten Commandments, I don't even know that. But look, Joe, uh, the Ten Commandments, Moses, David, you know, all those stories, but you haven't really even read them yourself. Really, really in Bible. A lot of times you don't go because you're scared because you're not going to know the answer to a question they have right back at you. That's a huge one. When you go on and then you guys, and I appreciate I love it. When you guys text me and mention, remember my friend said, da, 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 da. I'm like, all right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but you should know that answer too. Okay, I'm, it's fine. You guys come up to me. I love it because I get it. But you put that in your pocket and find it in the Bible so that you understand it yourself. Because there's two things: you can memorize something or understand something. It's better to understand something because if you understand, you automatically memorize it. And if you understood it, you have a deeper meaning of what it means, and you're able to explain it to somebody else. If you just memorize something, let's say you memorize uh, a formula. You won't be able to explain it to somebody else if you didn't understand how the formula worked. You know? You're like, oh, y equals mx plus b. That's the oh, formula. So okay, memorized. how do I use it? I don't know, but that's how that's what it is. <laughs> that's it. No, you need to understand what is x, what is m, what is b plus all that. What is it? How, how what do I plug into those things? I don't know, but that's the formula. No, that you gotta understand what the word is saying, okay? In order to be able to teach it to somebody, and look, if that—that's the worst excuse ever, because you don't know, then you want read it, read it. It's right there. It's in English. You got an NIV, one of the simplest versions to read, not a King James version where thou out for whatever. No, it's easy, okay. And I know it might be difficult to understand some of the things, but that's when you slowly read. This is not like a speed contest where you're expected by God. You only read one chapter. No, God doesn't do that. God wants to know, hey, from the two verses I read, I got that much out of it. That shows more than anything to God that, man, I love his word. Every word that he says is so valuable that even two verses would fill up this whole lesson today. Two verses. Something that didn't make sense, but then when you really thought about it, it made complete sense, and it taught more than if it were to make re regular sense. If we would say everybody's scared, every that doesn't teach anything. But because they were confident and because they were daring, and most of them did, that means some didn't. In those two things, we got this whole lesson. Out of it. That's crazy. That's God. But I read that. You know, I read. You gotta read it. Like I always say, the Bible is God's lips. If you open them up, He can talk to you. The way you talk back is you pray. That's that's a relationship. If you just pray, you just come to church, you just dance, you just sing, you just if I just play the drums and I never, you know, I'm just talking, 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 talking to him, but I'm never letting him talk back to me. Okay, you gotta you gotta let him talk back to you. And uh, let me see. No, uh, and I put questions are for those people, the most people. Okay, the ones that don't because of something happening to Paul, those people that didn't do something, that didn't get the confidence, become daring to go for it. You know the reason, some of the reasons now because they might be embarrassed because they are probably guilty of the way they're living, or because they don't know the word of God, they don't know what to whip out at the right time. Those three things and more. I'm just those are three. That brings the question, are they maybe truly followers of God? Are they really bearing fruit for him? Are they really bearing their cross? Remember I talked about last bearing your cross. Are they really? Are they really? Because those are a lot of stuff. Just because they don't spread the I mean the whole point God made us is to to 
act Christ like and to and to act Christ like means to spread the word, to make disciples. It's not just it's not only about bringing somebody to church, plop here. Okay, Pastor, do the rest. No, no. You sit down with them, talk to them about God, read the Bible with them. And you can't do that if you don't do it yourself. How are you gonna do that? It's exactly you know, you memorize the equation, you memorize that you're supposed to read the Bible, but if you don't understand. Stand with the Bibles. You're not going to be able to teach anybody. You're not going to be able to have somebody really come to God. And the worst thing is having somebody believe that because they said one prayer that they're automatically saved. Because it's not just that. It's, it is that. That's where it begins. But to genuinely have that prayer and be so 100% true, it's going to be followed by how they live the rest of their life. Just like that big Mack truck that I said, if it hits you, and that was God, you'll be permanently changed for the rest of your life. If right away, even if you said that one little prayer, I had many holiness come into this room and I prayed with them the prayer of salvation. And right away, nothing changed. After they kept living the same and they never came back. It's not about, oh, here's my card. This is my card for when I die. I need it stamped with heaven or hell. Okay, I'm going to go to church, wait for them to ask to come up to the altar, make that prayer. Hey, can you stamp my um, where I go when I die card, please? Oh, heaven? Oh, I'm saved now. Okay, see ya. And that, that, that's like a, I, I can go sin now all I want. It's not a license to sin. It's a change in your life permanently. If God comes in truly into your life, genuinely, then your life is not going to be the same. It's going to be different. Okay? So um, that was just reading those two verses. Now we're going to read the rest of the chapter. No, no, no. That's it. All right, so... Um, uh, I'm going to ask now, let me go ahead and pause or stop. Or